Hello, I'm James Clark. And I'm Atlas Dudziak. And today we're going to have a couple interviews with members here at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. And we're here to get more insight on the Mexican gray wolves and how we can help. The most recent count was 196 animals in the wild. It's very low. What is unique about Mexican gray wolves is they're actually the most genetically distinct subspecies of all wolves, and that's very important. When we talk about breeding animals, we really want to preserve their genetics so that that subspecies doesn't go away. If we were to crossbreed with another species of wolf, um, Mexican gray wolves would no longer exist as a subspecies. So it really wouldn't help their particular population. Okay, so the way that we care for wolves here at the zoo, how does that translate over to caring for wolves better in the wild? Well, one of the biggest things that we have learned um, since we've had Mexican wolves in captivity is that captive raised wolves tend to not do very well when they're released into the wild. They tend to be, even if they're not raised by people, they are just still too habituated to being around people. Deforestation could have played a factor as people moved into the area. They of course expanded and probably cleared out some, some of the natural habitat for wolves, which made them have to kind of look for prey in different areas. If they cleared out some of those forests in order to establish human living areas, then the wolves changed their prey to livestock, which was more readily available. So after the Endangered Species Act was passed, we had the development of the Wolf Recovery Program and Plan, which is basically centered around recovering wolves, increasing the population, and this is a plan that is evaluated every few years. And new initiatives are brought into the picture to continue developing our plan and citing specific things that we need to do to recover these animals. Well, one of the most interesting things about how we care for Mexican gray wolves in zoo populations is that we actually treat them as if they are wild animals. Unlike many of the other animals at the zoo that get regular um, handling by staff, they get trained, they get enrichment, um, they get a lot more contact with humans, we actually try to avoid doing that with Mexican gray wolves. And the reason for that is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service actually manages the populations of Mexican gray wolves in zoos in order to keep them all as potentially releasable animals. So we want those wolves to have natural behavior. We want to interfere with them as little as possible. We want them to still remain afraid of humans. So we actually try to keep their environment pretty wild. It's very different. Okay, so how can we spread information about conserving wolves and kind of work to get them off the endangered species list? Um, from at a larger level, um, the Endangered Species Act is so, so important for protecting these animals. And in recent years, we've had the Endangered Species Act challenged at the highest levels of our government. And when things like that happen, the more kind of grassroots support that we have of people saying, no, we don't want this to change. You know, we support this act. Here's the reasons why it's important. Um, that is huge. On a local level, people who are in those communities, um, in Arizona, in New Mexico, the more that we can get in there and educate people, um, the more we can get people who live there to want to help the wolves and want to educate, the better. 